Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, one of the most common questions I get asked on this channel, other than shedding questions of course, is whether or not you need blood work when you're on finasteride or dutasteride. And my emphatic answer to that question is no, you do not need blood work. And in fact, by getting blood work, you're very likely making things worse for yourself. I get this question on pretty much every video, and every day there is some gonk on Tressless who posts his blood work panels and foolishly asks strangers online to make sense of all of it. I get asked the question so frequently, in fact, that I made an entire video about it already that I'll link below. Yet, despite that video where I go over the whole subject in a lot of great detail, I still have people who will say on pretty much every video I make, But Kevin, I'm on Dutasteride, which should crush my serum DHT levels, but I did a blood test and my DHT is still in the normal range. What am I supposed to do, bro? Well, the first question I would ask is this. Why did you get a DHT test to begin with? You are a proud member of the Dutasteride Master Race, and you are already on the strongest medication available to combat the slaphead curse. So, what does getting a DHT blood test add to that exactly? Just wait six months to a year, and you will see results in the form of hair regrowth. And trust me, Chooms, when your hair loss stops and you start seeing new hair regrowth, you're not going to give a shit about what a DHT blood test says. But, what often happens is that people panic because of a treatment shed after just a few weeks of therapy, and then they start to wonder, hmm, am I one of those extremely rare people that metabolize dutasteride in a weird way? They think, I just switched from finasteride to dutasteride, and now I'm shedding and losing a lot of my hair. Maybe I better check my serum DHT levels just to see if dutasteride is actually working for me. And that, my fellow hair loss switchers, is when they make a major, major mistake. What will happen is that they will check their DHT blood level, and it will end up not being as low as they expected. In fact, it's possible it might even still be in the normal range. So they'll say something like, Oh, look at that. You see that, Kevin? That proves that I'm a special snowflake who is resistant to dutasteride. You told me this stuff would stop my hair loss forever, but you lied to me, bro. So what am I supposed to do now to stop my hair loss, huh, Kevin? Okay. I'll tell you what you need to do. The first thing you should do is shut the fuck up. Don't panic because everything is going to be fine, chums. First of all, like I said earlier, what's even more common than blood work questions are shedding questions. If I had an adipocyte cell for every shedding question that I was asked, I'd be fatter than Jason Blaha. Shedding is a normal occurrence that happens when you start any effective drug treatment for androgenic alopecia. It doesn't matter if it's finasteride, dutasteride, or even topical minoxidil. These drugs all accelerate the conversion of the telogen resting phase of the hair growth cycle into the antigen growth phase. When your hair transitions from the telogen phase into the antigen phase, the old hair has to shed first. That's exactly what you want to happen. With these treatments, you're going to increase the number of hairs in the antigen growth phase, but to do this, you have to go through a shed. So, shedding is a sign that the drugs are working. And before you start to panic because you started finasteride and you didn't notice a shed, let me just say that the amount of shedding is extremely variable. It can either be very subtle, so much so that you may not even notice it, or it can be very, very heavy for a lot of individuals. In either case, though, give the medication some time to work and ignore the shed. If it really bothers you, then you can try using a concealer like Kabuki or Derm Match that can give your hair the appearance of having more density while your new hairs grow in. Of course, I made a video about shedding too, which I'll link below, and I highly encourage everyone to watch it because shedding questions are the most common questions I get asked on my channel by far. And if there are any other hair loss YouTubers watching this video, I'm willing to bet you that they will tell you the exact same thing and they probably get more shedding questions more often than anything else on their channel too. But let's go ahead and get back to the blood work question. Suppose you foolishly ignore my advice to avoid getting blood work and you end up getting a DHT blood test on treatment anyways only to find out that DHT levels aren't even low. How can that happen? Well sometimes the problem is is that if you just get a DHT blood level test while on treatment you don't have a baseline DHT level from before starting treatment to actually compare it to. So if you had a baseline DHT level you'd see that the DHT level on treatment really was a lot lower on treatment. But could that explain having a DHT level that is still in the normal range while on a drug like dutasteride, which lowers serum DHT levels by 90%. Also, you may be thinking, okay, well, I haven't started finasteride yet, so I'll just go ahead and get a DHT blood test done first, and then I'll see what the results were after I've been on finasteride for a little while. But that's not a good idea either, Chums. You see, there's one other huge factor involved.
involved here, hair loss witchers, and that factor is the accuracy of the tests that are used to measure the DHT blood levels. It turns out the commonly used tests for measuring serum DHT are extremely flawed, and they often vastly overestimate the true DHT levels in people getting blood work. This article here goes into just how inaccurate commercially available tests for DHT are. So, to summarize all this in this article, the authors developed a new method to measure both serum testosterone and serum DHT levels. They used a technique called liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry, or LCMS for short. They compare this technique to the more traditional techniques to measure these hormones, which is by using a radioimmunoassay. First of all, they show that the type of test tube used to collect the blood had marked effect on testosterone and DHT levels. If you ever had your blood drawn, you've seen that the test tubes used have different color caps, and the different colors mean that there are different additives in the test tubes. For example, some tubes have a clot activator that causes the blood to clot and separates out the serum from the blood cells. The investigators found that the type of tube resulted in testosterone levels four times higher than what was seen with test tubes without the clot activator. Another type of tube, which is a tube coated with fluoride, resulted in an artificial lowering of the testosterone and DHT levels by 15 to 20 percent. But aside from the different values seen when using different tubes, the investigators found that the new LCMS method for measuring DHT gave much more accurate measurements of DHT than the traditional radioimmunoassay methods that are used. The traditional radioimmunoassay methods, which are labeled as RIA on this graph, consistently gave artificially higher serum DHT levels than the LCMS method. Worse than that, though, it turns out that the lower the serum DHT levels are, the more the RIA method overestimated the true serum DHT value. You can see that in this graph here. When the true DHT levels as measured by the LCMS method was close to zero, the RIA method could overestimate the DHT level by as much as 140%. The authors summarized their results by saying, quote, we identified problems interfering with RIA that preclude the validation of serum DHT against the previously validated method in laboratories, which is required by regulatory agencies. The concentration of serum DHT measured by any RIA method overestimates the serum DHT levels. The biological effects of circulating DHT in men and women need to be reevaluated. Unquote. In other words, DHT's measurements by the commonly used radioimmunoassay method are completely worthless, particularly if your DHT DHT levels are low, which is obviously what happens when you take a 5-air inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride. They certainly aren't accurate in the slightest, and nobody should ever use such results to decide whether the treatment is working for them or if they need to change their treatment protocol. So please, chums, stop with the blood work and stop testing your DHT levels. You are wasting your time and your money. They are completely inaccurate, and so they can't be relied on in the slightest. And even if they were more accurate, it's still the DHT suppression in the hair follicles that is actually important, not what's going on in your bloodstream. So there is no logic to getting DHT blood levels tested to begin with. And since they are grossly inaccurate, all they're going to do is make you jump to the conclusion that your treatment isn't working when it actually is. And then because of the blood test that you just took, you'll end up stopping effective treatments, which will result in you losing your hair for no good reason at all. So I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Jones, but the only way you're ever going to figure out how well finasteride or dutasteride will work for you is through some good old-fashioned trial and error. Just take the damn drug and wait at least a year before judging results. There is no test you can take beforehand or while you're on treatment that is going to tell you how well you're doing. You're just going to have to be patient and wait. There is no way around that. Okay. So, I already have made several attempts on this channel to convince people to stop with the fucking blood work, so I thought it was worth one more attempt to get people to stop wasting their time and money with it. I see people post blood work stuff on a daily basis on Tressless, so I hope they see this video too. Maybe this video will help, maybe it won't, but at least I can say that I tried. Alright, Choom, so that's it for today, but stay tuned because my next video is going to cover the subject of diet, so it might be a little bit controversial, but it's going to be a fun and exciting video, I assure you. But thank you all so much for watching this video today. I'll be back with you all soon. Take care and God bless.